Hello Bookmarts, welcome to another Facebook live with another new author and uh, what a debut I must say. Uh, first of all, uh, welcome to the session Bhavna. Glad to have you here and this is just an awesome, you know, uh, milestone for us because this epic book and, you know, it is kind of, you know, an epic of epics because there are so many epics inside this one book and beautifully produced, you know, I must say. And let me tell you, uh, guys, um, all the readers out there who will be watching and who are watching, uh, let me tell you that Bhavna uh, has studied in Masuri for all of those uh, book nerds enthusiasts who live in Dehradun. She's from Masuri and that's why uh, we would like to call her our own. We and Mumbai can fight over that, you know, that's, that's absolutely, absolutely fine. And, you know, she has been uh, um, doing a lot of social work in her life. And uh, of course, this book is co-authored with B. Amish Tripathi. I won't be introducing him because that would be quite foolhardy of me. I won't be doing that. Uh, so this is a sibling duo which is here to stay because that's my first impression. And I believe it's a trilogy, Bhavna, if I'm not wrong. Uh, well, uh, you know, right now we have uh, uh, three books in the pipeline. Yeah. But uh, let us see where, uh, you know, this effort takes us. Great, Amish. great. So uh, I'll be asking you a little bit about Masuri and what has got to do with all of this. Uh, but before that, I would like to quote from the book and something which I really, you know, kind of, uh, it stuck right here and it is not going away. That That's for sure. So <laughs> it is um, on page 154 for all those who have the book already. Uh, death in the course of doing one swadharm is better than following another's path for that is truly dangerous. I mean that is you know kind of a lot of knowledge in just one sentence and uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that and then I'll also tell the readers about how this book unfolds a little bit not giving too many spoilers. <laughs> Uh, Swadharm is, um, uh, you know, Swadharm is um, what you are meant to be doing. Yeah. But uh, Swadharm is a very complex, um, uh, you know, phenomenon because uh, you can delude yourself into imagining your own uh, Swadharm. Any, uh, any uh, concept of Swadharm yeah. that is at odds with Dharm yeah. cannot be Swadharm. Yeah. Uh, it has to be in alignment. Okay. Um, uh, that is crucial to it being Swadharm or else it's a uh, fantasy. It's your own uh, trip being defined as uh, Swadharm. Right. So certainly um, uh, Judas uh, followed his Swadharm yes. because had there been no Judas, there would have been no Jesus. Yes. Uh, Ravan followed his Swadharm. Had there been no Ravan, there would have been no Ram. Yes. Uh, it's it's complex. Yes. You have to be in alignment with the forces of life itself. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it was a good kickstart for me because, I mean, I don't re read these kind of books. And that's why I'm so happy about it. Because, you know, I started reading it. And then, you know, again... Mythology is something that I have been reading, but not like those crazy people who always read mythology, but <laughs> I could understand the context of whatever is given in the book because a lot of content that has been referenced is from Amish's uh, trilogies and, you know, books. So that was something which I loved and contrary to opinion on the Amazon page where people are saying that, okay, why and this and that, but I love the way the balance was there, you know, it wasn't as if, you know, uh, you were just speaking about uh, the epic, the books of Amish. Uh, it was like quite well balanced with the epics and how the tales have been told in a very short manner, which would be great for the millennials also, because, you know, it's very tough to, you know, kind of read all the epics in detail. Was that one of the things that you were careful about that millennials should be able to relate to this, read it, and perhaps, you know, then go to the epics and Amish's books? Absolutely. That was uh, central to uh, our idea. 
okay. the idea behind this project um, uh, you know so, uh, to um, pass it on pass the torch on uh, so to speak um, um, actually amisha's uh, uh, story is a very central to this effort because it's any amisha's stories themselves that gave rise to right. these philosophical discussions right. amisha right. stories right. and of course as for uh, mahabharata and ramayana as is so uh, beautifully said no indian listens to the mahabharata or ramayana for the first time hamari rag rag mein hai and uh, so uh, it has to be a natural ecosystem from which any kind of indian philosophy uh, emerges let's talk about the four characters that you have uh, both you and amish have used um, uh, dharmraj lopamudra gargi and nachiket i mean tell tell us about what were the discussions like when you were t- uh, taking up these characters you know kind of blending it with what you wanted to say because uh, there are four voices i mean uh, <laughs> i mean i can imagine the discussion that must be going in that room how to you know kind of bring it all together tell us a little bit about that what was happening this really was um, uh, amish's genius so uh, raj uh, this project had begun uh, around uh, 2013 14 and uh, the entire uh, it had emerged from uh, discussions on amish's uh, stories his shiva trilogy had already been released uh, meluha nagas as well as um, vaiputras yeah. and uh, we were discussing the philosophies behind the shiva trilogy we were also discussing uh, murti puja Yeah. and uh, you know it was our brother anish who suggested uh, why don't you guys uh, you know make uh, philosophy front end and write uh, a book on philosophy uh, the two of you yeah. so really raj i had written 20 pages initially okay, okay. Uh, which was the uh, philosophical nichol okay. of uh, this yeah. book i had sent it to amish and uh, amish is 8 years younger than me so you know he's he's mera bachcha hai and so he's very respectful very correct but also very forthright okay. and he had said to me didi this is not happening ye to bahut hi theoretical you know yeah, yeah. and uh, so i said okay you know you are the expert bolo kya kare Yes. He said, "You hang on. Uh, you know, let me work on this." And these four characters really, Raj, were created by him. Okay. Uh, it was his genius. Okay. And the beauty is, it is uh, a mother, a father, and a daughter and son-in-law. Not a son and daughter-in-law. Yes. You know, yes. that yes. is what makes it so particularly appealing. Of course. And uh, it had, you know, gone to and fro. Initially, it was really. the four characters were the vehicle through which the philosophy had to emerge but yeah. willy nilly these four uh, people became real yeah. and uh, they too acquired a personality yeah. personality dynamics and uh, they are very vibrant uh, human beings yeah. in amish and my life now yeah. i i could sense that i mean in the beginning i was like why are these people here i mean i can just read the crux of everything and get a gist of the book but uh, you know suddenly i started realizing halfway through the book that they have their own story building up and this could go somewhere <laughs> and uh, that's what kind of you know uh, uh, is happening uh, so tell me something you have drawn a lot of uh, uh, parallels and you have defined kind of uh, the characters from ramayana and mahabharata as qualities qualities or you know perhaps uh, non qualities uh, so you have done so much of you know you know kind of parallels um tell us a little bit about the parallel bit uh, especially the part about uh, uh ganesh uh, and i was quite intrigued by that because you know it uh, gave me a new light on the entire persona and how we perceive ganesh ganesh really uh, you know lord ganesh uh, has been uh, extracted from uh, amish's uh, you know shiva trilogy Yeah. and uh, through him uh, really what we are examining is uh, what it is uh, to be uh, hurt okay. um and life hurts us all yeah. uh, we've yeah. all been unfairly dealt with in life we have also been more than fairly dealt with by yeah. life yeah. so uh, you know glass aadha bhara hai sab ka aadha khali hai sab ka the universe doesn't particularly pick on one person yeah. nor does the universe famous uh, you know favor uh, one person yeah. uh, 
Uh, and we have contrasted Ganesh with Kali and uh, Khan right. because all three have been abandoned. Right. Um, you know, they have, a, they have been abandoned uh, um, very crudely uh, by uh, their parents. Yes. But uh, the response is so different. Right. Karn uh, is a victim. Yeah. Karn uh, blames. Uh, Karn is resentful. Right. Kali is angry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She is full of anger. She seeks. Really she rages. Angry. She rages. Uh, Lord Ganesh is, uh, you know, he's, he's flipped his experience. Yeah. You know, what I did not get, I will not tire of giving. Right. And that really is, uh, you know, the beauty of the response to pain. Right. What uh, what do you what do you make from uh, pain? Yeah. Uh, he is compassion itself. He is kind. He relentlessly helps. Right. He is relentlessly protective. He is relentlessly just there right. for everybody. Life wasn't there for him. Yeah. But he is there for all forms of life. That's, that's what what an amazing learning. I mean, just you know, it's it's done so beautifully. The the things we can learn. I mean, it. It is non-fiction, of course. You are supposed to learn from it. But it's such a big, it can be such a big learning curve. If you really, you know, study the book and readers, please don't read it like <laughs> on the surface. Just go in depth and, you know, you'll understand what I mean. Let's talk about Duryodhan. He, this character has always kind of, you know, has been fascinating. And uh, you talk about on page 59 uh, about resentful envy of Duryodhan. So, I mean, you haven't taken a side. That's so beautiful. But still, I would love to know uh, about your opinion on that. Duryodhan is tragic. Uh, envy really is uh, the ugliest yeah. of um, human weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, I would go so far as to say that, uh, you know, to experience envy and, you know, there is a corner in all of us which uh, experiences envy sometime or the other let's not you know all of us too uh, there is a monster within each of us and the most uh, malignant monster is the envious monster um, uh, uh, also at the same time uh, I think one must be most wary of people who are envious of us because there are always those uh, never distance anybody Okay. anybody okay. except okay. those who are envious of you okay. because okay. Uh, that can uh, that can contaminate you okay. Uh, okay. Duryodhan is envy the most monstrous of emotions but the fascinating aspect of uh, you know the philosophical take on Duryodhan is that Duryodhan is also Suyodhan um, you know he's also his other name is Suyodhan the possibility of being Suyodhan yeah. Uh, it's only when you tap into the possible monster in you mm -hmm. and confront it, face it, even embrace it, mm -hmm. do you make it possible mm -hmm. to realize the heroic in you, yeah. the beautiful in you. Yes. In some parallel universe, Duryodhan is Su Suyodhan also. Oh yes, a multiverse. And it's rightly said on 59, uh, Dharamraj uh, says resentment, they are related the two. Duryodhan's standout vice is envy, resentful envy. All of us have experienced, experienced it at some point in our lives. Uh, the interplay between wanting and having. Sometimes you have a lot and yet you are full of toxic resentment. I mean, it's, I mean, and then you have uh, also mentioned uh, mantra there. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, quite so relevant. It's so contemporary. I was wondering how can this book be so contemporary because it's talking about all the mythology, mythological characters. It's so contemporary and right now, uh, especially after last year, I mean, there's so many pent up emotions that are coming mm. out. Uh, mm. So was it written last year? <laughs> no, not really. Okay. It was... <laughs> I was wondering. I was wondering because there are a couple of mask references. That's why. Yes. So it was. It was updated. You see, okay. uh, Raj, uh, we had uh, begun working on this project around 2013-14, as I mentioned. Okay. Um, there was a lot of toing and froing between uh, Amish and me. Yeah. 
Okay. It was almost uh, completely ready uh, by around 2016. Okay. But uh, then it was shelved because of certain uh, personal reasons. Okay. During the COVID period, really, Amish had called me up and said, Didi, you know, let's retrieve it and, you know, dust it and chalo, ab kaam karte hai yeah. And primarily what was left was a little bit of polishing, a lot of editing work that was done by our wonderful editor, Kartika. Okay. Okay. Updation, so the mask reference, you know, came in. Uh, during the COVID period. So okay. there was uh, a sort of an updation and right. editing process that happened during this COVID period. Okay, so it was Kartika uh, from uh, Westland. And thank you, Westland. Shout out to you. Thank you for uh, letting us do this, uh, first of all. And so that uh, that was it was on the editor's table. Great. So uh, tell me something uh, in the... I, I, this might not... It's not a spoiler as such, but in the last, you know, chapter, uh, I was kind of, you know, uh, on a tangent because you were talking about uh, breathing, you know, and I was like, why is this happening? Can you little touch upon it a little bit and then perhaps, you know, I might ask you another question about it. It's all connected, you know. Uh, uh, at at an instinctive level, we know it. Our physicality, our emotions, our breathing. Okay. Uh, you know, when we are angry, we breathe quickly. Okay. Uh, you know, jali jali. You know, when we are fearful, we breathe hard. Yeah. When we are uh, happy, we breathe freely. When we are yeah. calm, we breathe slowly. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that, uh, you know, unfortunately, our uh, modern education has become very skill and profession focused. Right. Ancient education, certainly Indian education, yeah. uh, in our, uh, you know, gurukuls, dharamshalas, our temples, uh, even our madrasas, yeah. was uh, really educating you for life and not just for a skill, for a profession. Right. Ancient education in other parts of the world, it's uh, also how to live, how do we live? You know, yeah. and uh, one of the elements is uh, breathing. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, yes. uh, because yes. through correct breathing, we can control our emotion, we can get a handle, we can become masters of our own uh, response to life. Yes. Uh, take a deep breath. Both there. What does that yes. mean? It's, Calm it's, yourself. It's, Calm it's, yourself it's, down. It is so uh, important. Yeah, but growing up, I mean, you are right, and uh, I think so. In the in the introduction, uh, you have mentioned. I mean, there's a background, whole background to uh, about your childhood and uh, and your house and how you were educated. I mean, you went to English schools and all of that, you know. But at home, the atmosphere was completely different. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, we really did because, I mean, what would life be without Shakespeare and George Bernard Shaw? <laughs> uh, you know, as well as uh, Lata Mangeshkar and Bhimsen Joshi ji. Uh, Mahabharat is Mahabharat, but uh, the Greek myths have something to say for themselves. Um, uh, um, you know, that beautiful word and is so much more meaningful than or this and that. Why this or that? Yes. You know, uh, <laughs> and uh, our education enabled it. Uh, we were lucky because uh, ne, uh, you know, Bhartiya uh, Vatavaran tha. Yes. Uh, or uh, school mate it was uh, distinctly, you know, very Western, very global. Right. Right. So, yes, we did get the best of both the worlds. I, I, I I'm fortunate. Yeah. So, uh, are you worried that uh, a lot of other students, I mean, I mean, you mentioned the education system. It's kind of lopsided uh, right now. Uh, either we have the, you know, uh, the government schools where, you know, uh, Hindi and Sanskrit and everything is given, you know, ample attention. Um, I, at least I am aware about that. But uh, uh, in English schools, then it's lopsided. You know, it goes away. And so what's your take on that? Because this is kind of educating to so many students also. Would you like this book to be inculcated in schools? Has that discussion happened between the co-authors? Uh, do you see it as something that you could take up in the future? 
that is not for me to uh, you know state but i will say that uh, yes it would be you know cross fertilization is always useful yeah. a little bit has already happened things have okay. changed okay. from the time uh, you know that uh, i went to school even amish uh, yeah. his times uh, more yeah. should happen yeah. Uh, yeah. lata mangeshkar should make an entry into the most uh, spiffy elite uh, educational institutions yeah. of india yeah. uh, yeah. so should bhim sen joshi ji uh bodhayana should be taught along with the uh, pythagoras yeah. and a little bit of beatles at home will uh, you know <laughs> add to fun <laughs> why not why not a little bit of rock also does it uh, yes. it's quite helpful uh, yes. not some nirvana uh, but i uh, uh, a part of the book uh, which was kind of you know um, a little bit uh, uh, i was split Uh, by this part and uh, on page 95 uh, it's mentioned that uh, you know about controlling the sexual impulse there is a whole you know kind of chapter on it entire chapter and lot of contemporary uh, you know uh, thinkers and gurus have an opinion on this you know and uh, it's also mentioned you haven't take, taken any sides which i again loved but uh, what's your take on that because it's it was kind of uh, i was left split so that's why i'm asking we all have to find our own answers the nub of it is uh, you know in the realm of uh, sensuality yeah. uh, we are human beings right. uh, yeah. we are not animals yeah. and uh, you know it is uh, the the most beautiful the divine experience is possible for us yeah. uh, and uh, each one has to uh, follow his own uh, path his own dharma draw their own lines yeah. whatever lines you draw yeah. you uh, have to face the consequences of co- crossing those lines not drawing lines yeah. you know the adult message is there are consequences right. you know to our actions yeah. uh, and uh, lines that are drawn will uh, uh, you know uh, will either prevent uh consequences or bring consequences into your life yeah. also in uh, really the um uh ancient um, you know dharmic uh, you know from the dharmic perspective um uh, sex has not been denied yeah. sensuality has not been uh, set aside yeah. in fact it is it can be a beautiful route to the realization of divinity itself Okay. uh and the most beautiful yeah. uh it's an adult approach of course, to yeah. living yeah is what i would say yeah so um uh, i mean we we live in dune and uh, uh, you know there is this part of the hills here where uh, polygamy exists kind of they say that polygamy exists and it has been mentioned in reference to the pandavas and you know and um, Uh, the relationship between uh, uh, you know uh, draupadi and uh, bhim also has been kind of you know you've delved into that and then you know taken kind of um, uh, gone on a tangent and you know uh, talked about that in the book uh, from perhaps a, a very psychological and philosophical perspective also would you like to uh, uh, comment on that our book is about the inner universe Okay. and not uh, the external world which is equally valid which can be examined from a separate lens yeah uh it is based on um, uh, you know uh, uh taking responsibility for our actions yeah. and uh, understanding that uh, our actions have uh, consequences yeah and uh, accepting those consequences consequences and living with the consequences okay. of our actions okay. that is the lens from which we have written the book as okay. for uh, society yeah. and societal laws yeah. Uh, yeah. i believe in rules yeah. uh, i believe in rules i believe in um, uh, you know systems yeah. and uh, we uh, it would be nice for us to live in uh, accordance with the rules uh, uh, of our society and the laws of our country yeah uh so let's talk about uh, of course dharma and it's such a big question uh, but uh, i mean uh, it's interesting that how it uh, works in contemporary times i mean 
especially for the younger generation uh, and millennials not even that for everyone in also um, how does that work i mean of course you have to read the book to get to uh, that but in your opinion uh, how does one follow that amidst so much of noise there's so much noise right now and people go on travels and you know they take a break weekend break that doesn't work right i think it's individual you know uh, does one want to live uh, a meaningful or meaningless life yeah uh, you know if uh, you know people like sudha murthy and narayan murthy and neeta uh, ambani can find the time to uh, um, explore making life more meaningful yeah we all can yeah true. we uh, <laughs> <laughs> we um you know uh, it is uh, it is prioritizing life and invariably we find time for the things that we want to do in life if we can find the time uh, for netflix yeah as do you and i we do uh, uh, we can also find time to explore uh, the meaning of life and dharma yeah. it will only enrich our experience right uh, understanding life um, more deeply will only uh, equip us to live life better yeah. uh, in this uh, maya jal yeah. also yeah. make life more meaningful yeah. uh, it's up to us yeah. we don't do anyone else any favor by either uh, uh, putting effort into or not putting effort into yeah. making our life uh, more meaningful and more beautiful yeah uh, let's talk a, uh, a bit about the writing process because i mean of course uh, there are two authors and going forward i mean for the next and I, i don't know if you have started working on that in particular but how does one take care that not to step on to somebody else's you know zone uh, is there any demarcation because you are siblings of course so you are at an advantage kind of in the co-author space but uh, how does that work exactly because writing alone i think must be easier actually you know personally speaking it's easier for me to work with amish <laughs> uh than working all by myself um uh, you know, and incidentally we are working on our next project which okay. also was uh, largely done uh, you know and there is uh, updation required mm-hmm. and uh, you know more work uh it I, i'll mention it it's uh, you know on uh, murti pujan uh, okay. actually okay. Uh, our next project and as for working together raj uh, you know um in um, one sense uh, there is an eight year gap between um, you know us so i am i am really amish's second mother uh, so there is a lot of uh, respect in this direction right. on the other hand uh, you know he is amish to party you know <laughs> he knows his onions and uh, there's a lot of respect uh, you know in uh, the other direction as well i uh, greatly respect uh, not only my um, uh, brother amish as a human being but amish the author uh, you know for his skill and his expertise yeah. in uh, writing books um, uh, i Uh, respected greatly the thing that i think uh, you know authors working together yeah. i would imagine is either it is extremely easy yeah. or it is impossible <laughs> uh, you know there must not be middle ground almost yeah. <laughs> you know? because either ego will you know get in the way or you flow like a river um yeah. with uh, amish and me really it's uh, it's effortless Now we flow together like a river. It's very oh, easy. wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, any point of kind of where, uh, during writing, uh, one or two episodes where you kind of you were like, no, this can't be done. When you were like, you know, uh, were something like that, perhaps. Of course, you said that you write wrote twenty pages and sent it to him. Uh-huh. But were there any kind of moments where no, no, this is not, this can't go there? from a very you know kind of philosophical or you know your zone actually no <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's amazing that's amazing that's, you know even i i i think even if there was I, you would sort it out i i also saw that you you guys used a lot of modern 
lingo mm-hmm. and uh, in between so uh, that was something like w y s i w y g so it it was like what uh, where am i you know so it's beautiful that you have you know kind of uh, brought it all together um super stoked to have read it uh, for like couple of days beautiful and uh, you know looking forward to so much more thanks for speaking with us about all of this raj let me um, you know um, uh, thank you um, uh, deeply because uh, you really have uh, read the book not only have you read the book you have studied the book because your questions were uh, not surface level uh, they were deep and um, thank you these were these were just questions i wanted to ask myself i mean more than anything else i i really wanted to ask you these but uh, it is kind of you know and um, uh, it's uh, you should one should i mean all readers who pick this up they should ask themselves these questions i mean that's the whole point so i it's a deep book um, don't read the amazon reviews before buying it just buy it and then leave your review there because then it's organic you know you can just be very i did not read the amazon reviews at all because they you know kind of confuse me always i don't read them i just pick up the book have my own opinion about it if i like it it's fine if i don't like it that's also fine completely so uh, thank you so much thank you so much this is amazing and uh, perhaps on the second one and the third one uh, both of you can come uh, on our uh, show together that would be even um, i mean it's you know the amish but uh, the uh, psychological and philosophical angle that you have explored in the book is truly commendable and thank you westland again for thank, uh, letting us do this guys grab a copy leave your amazon review of course uh, i have my copy too yes, yes. <laughs> and oh, we, we didn't talk about the production i mean it's so amazing <laughs> this hard cover and i posted it on face, uh, facebook and elsewhere also that it has been produced well so yeah i forgot uh, kudos to westland yeah. and uh, uh, thank you raj uh, please thank neha on my behalf of course well. thank you so much thank you so much